Welcome, Vineyard Cincinnati family. We are so glad that you're here this morning. Can you stand with me and let's worship together? Sing this with me, your word. Your word is eternal, Lord. It stands firm from the heavens. Your word, oh, it is our song. To praise you is our weapon. Cause there is power in the name of Jesus. The name that heals, the name that saves, the name can raise the dead again. There is power in your name. Amen. So much power. Your name is high. Your name is great. Your voice, your voice is the sound. To every tribe and nation, and we'll sing from within our hearts, our praise is our weapon, cause there is power in the name of Jesus, there is power in the name, the name that heals, the name that Church, I will exalt you, God, my King. For I will exalt God, my King. I bless your name for. 
Last week we talked about this idea of intercession and it's this idea of, Clay told us it's, it's where we take heaven and bring it to a circumstance where heaven is needed, right? That can be as simple as, God, I really feel like you're inviting me into this job or it can be something as intense as a sickness that could be harmful to a human being. I think all of us have a place where we would wanna see heaven come to that circumstance right now. So I just wanna invite you to be really honest about what that is and begin to pray that now. What does it look like for you to intercede? I know that's a big word that we use in church at times, 
But what we're actually saying is we're stepping in on behalf of that person, that circumstance, that situation, and saying, I'm going to choose to ask God to bring heaven to that now. Does anybody have a situation that they feel like they need heaven in right now? Every hand should be up, right? Every hand should be up. Let's begin to pray that. Be really specific. I don't see a lot of mouths moving. Come on, begin to pray that to the Lord, right? There's nothing, that I really believe this. You guys have heard me say this. I sound like a broken record. But I don't, I think there's something that happens when we really speak words out to the Lord. He knows what we're thinking. He knows what we're praying when we pray up here. But the reality is when I say, Lord, I'm praying on behalf of this situation, it now becomes real in the world around me. There's a really powerful uh, in, the, in the book, The Chronicles of Narnia, I'm reading this right now. There's a story where in the very first book, this character named Diggory, he, he, Aslan, who's, who's the God figure, he asks him to go and, and figure out a, a situation. And so Diggory's on his way, and they can't get all the way to where they're supposed to go. It's too far away. And so they have to stop Diggory and this uh, magical flying horse and the horse, of course, can talk because it's Narnia, right? And so they land, and he's talking to Diggory, who's this little boy. He says, like, I don't have anything to eat tonight. Like, didn't Aslan know I should have had food to eat? And the horse just looks at him and said, I think Aslan knew that you needed food. I think he just likes to be asked sometimes. And I think God's the same way. He knows what we need right now in this moment, but there's something about asking there's something about the fact that he becomes a father in that moment. What do you need to pray for today? There you wanna ask God to intercede on your behalf to make it look more like heaven. Let's take it just a few moments and begin to pray that. So just as, as a response to that prayer, let's just sing that chorus one more time. Our Father in heaven, let's just believe that that's true. Let's just sing. Our Father in heaven, blessed will be your name, your kingdom. Step into a time of communion together. Uh, you should have received communion when you walked in. If you didn't, uh, just throw a hand in the air. Uh, someone will bring it to you. And we also have it located up on the front of the stage as well as uh, up in the balcony. But just go ahead and have communion ready this morning. We're gonna, I w we want to share a new song with you that, um, that myself and Darius wrote. And it, it, it comes out of Mark chapter 10 verse 35. Um, I want to read just a small piece of scripture before we enter into communion and, and, and sing this song. Here's what Mark chapter 10, verse 35 to 38 says. It says, then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to him, talking about Jesus. They came to Jesus. Teacher, they said, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. And Jesus looks at them and says, what do you want me to do for you? They replied, let one of us sit at your right and the other at your left in your glory. And Jesus looks at them and says, you don't know what you're asking. Can you drink the cup I drink or be baptized with the baptism I am to be baptized with? What Jesus is saying, he's like, I think Jesus, I think he like felt that in his heart. Like, I think there's something special that happened when they said, God, we want to be with you. Jesus, we want to be with you. Like he says, uh, they want to be with the Lord right now in that moment, and they want to be with Jesus in his glory that is to come. And Jesus just says to him, you don't, you don't understand what you're asking. Like what he's referring to is what he would suffer, what he would endure on the cross to come. 
right? I think John and James had a great heart behind what they're asking. And I think what they were asking was really true. They just didn't know the whole story. And the more I thought about that, the more I think I can relate to James and John, which is I want to be with Jesus. I want to know his presence. I want to experience what it's like to stand with him. But I just don't know really what all that takes, right? And so the more that I ask that question about that scripture, I think John and John and James are saying like, Jesus, we will stand with you. Like, we'll drink that cup. We will be in that baptism with you. We will endure the pain. And I think I oftentimes say to myself, if I had a way to do that, I would too. Like if I had a way to offer something to Jesus, to take away some of the pain that he faced, I think I would take it. I think if I, had, if I knew a way to make it so I didn't forget mistakes that I've made anymore, I would take it. And I think James and John are asking the same thing. They're saying to Jesus, Lord, if we can help, let us. And the heart behind it is so good, but the reality is, the story is that Jesus offered himself for us. And I think that's why it hurts me even more when I say things like, Jesus, if I knew a way to take away your pain, I would do it. It's because I know it was for me. When I think about that idea, I know it was for you, right? If you're a human being in this room, Jesus endured some type of pain for you. And so the reason we take communion is because we remember what it was that Jesus did for us, right? His blood that was shed, his body that was broken. We remember the cup that he drank or the baptism that he was baptized with that he, t- that he shares with John and James in that moment. So we're gonna sing a song over the next four or five minutes. And I wanna invite you to um, just take a posture of remembering. I wanna invite you to remember what it was that Jesus did. You can take communion during this time, but I want you to do it on your own. I want you to do it with the people that you came with. I want you to take time to really remember what it was that Jesus did. And I almost want this song to feel as if it's an offering, a conversation, an extension of us to Jesus. Saying, Jesus, if I had a way to take away the pain you faced, I would try to do it. But I know that's not the end of the story. So we take communion to remember we just have this honest conversation of praise to the Lord. So I want to invite you to sit, but if you want to stand, if you want to go to your knees, if you want to lift your hands, this space is open. And we're just going to take a few minutes to be in God's presence. So take communion on your own time. Don't rush. Let's just praise the Lord. Yeah, let's worship his name. If I had a way 
to not forget how I've been changed. I do it. Oh, God, I do it. But I thank God the cross was not the end, that every sin I would commit erased when you said it's finished and hope was born again so i will praise the name of jesus and i will praise the son of god because he is father son and spirit and he is the cross you died but with love you rose there's nowhere else i can find real hope you can have my heart come and make it yours i want nothing else but to know you lord by the cross you died but with love you rose there's nowhere else i can find real hope you can have my heart come and make it yours i want nothing else but to know you And he is Father, Son, and Spirit. He is love, the Holy One. So we praise your name, Lord. We praise your name, Lord. We remember your we remember your love and we praise your name praise your name we remember your blood we remember your love and we praise your name we praise your name we remember your God, we remember today. We remember what it meant when you hung on that cross. We remember what it meant when you said, not my will, but yours, Father. It's a love that we don't deserve, but you have said that we do. And so, Lord, I pray today that we would just recognize that your presence is what matters. Your presence is what matters, and you said that it is always with us through the spirit of truth. So, Lord, I pray that we would become more aware of the spirit of truth today. I pray that we would become more aware of your presence today. And we thank you, Lord. And it is in your mighty name that everybody said, amen. Amen. Come on, can we praise the Lord together this morning? Man, it's just good to be together. So, hey, my name is Tyler. I'm the worship pastor here. And on behalf of all of us at the Vineyard, just want to say welcome and so glad that you're here. Um, if you would, if you're joining us in the room, just take a second and say hello to the person in front and behind you. And then you can grab your seat, even though you're already sitting. That's how much it's a script. And uh, so glad that you're joining us online from wherever you're at. 
Welcome. Good morning, everyone. It is so wonderful to see all your smiling faces. Uh, my name is Cassie, and I'm with my friend, Ginny. Hola, everyone. Hola. Very nice. Good morning. We are so glad to be with you today, worshiping. Oh, it's delightful to be here, and the worship team is doing an amazing job just helping us connect with God this morning. Welcome. If you are new, Welcome specifically to you that are visiting today, uh, even for those watching online. I highly encourage you to fill out the Connect card because we want to get to know you better. We want to serve you better. And make sure you come and say hello to the Welcome Center. You know, a handful of us will be there to say hello to you. Yes, getting connected into the life of this church is so important as we continue on our faith journey. Another way you can get connected is by becoming a VCC partner. Yes. You've heard us talk quite a bit about that lately. Mm -hmm. So, Jenny, what does that mean to you? Well, that's simply, just imagine all of us as an arm army, you know, linking hands, doing great things uh, for the sake of God's kingdom here, near, and far. Yes, exactly. Um, so if you already know that you are all in, um, we encourage you, go to our website, go ahead and find that partner agreement and just sign it electronically. Then we'll start uh, getting you communications about quarterly on what's going on here at the church. Now, if you're still not sure what all in means being a VCC partner, we get it. Um, today is your lucky day. Join us in the big room after today's service, and you will be able to find out just what that means. It'll be about 30 minutes. You'll get to ask questions, and there's going to be snacks. So meet I'll us be there, there then. I'll be there. I'll be there. you got to be there, too. <laughs> Everyone is welcome to be there. We'll have a Spanish interpretation as well. Also, listen, I'm super excited because Baptism Weekend, it's coming up, and yes. it is super <laughs> special for us to be uh, with those who have made their decision to follow Jesus for the rest of their lives. And during uh, here, the weekend service are able to, you know, let everybody know about uh, their desire to pursue Jesus. So make sure you can uh, sign up for a class coming up, but I want you to check out this video with more information about it. go down in that watery grave they're joining a death like his and they're raising to new life with him so they're not only dead in Christ but they are alive with him Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. It is awesome. There is something magical about Baptism Sundays, to be in the presence in this space where people are intentionally making that choice to give their life to Christ. It's just, it's truly special. amazing. It is special. 
Um, and being a Christian here at VCC, we are intentional about all that we do. We're intentional about giving our life to Christ. Um, we're intentional about praying, about discipling, and we're intentional about generosity. One of the ways we do that, obviously, is through our giving and tithing. But as a church, we, we love to partner with organizations here, near, and far away that are blessing communities, making impacts, and advancing the kingdom. We do that through a program called Give It All Away. Um, we give up to $20,000 to these types of organizations. And this month... Okay, let tell me everything about it. <laughs> How about we make a little noise to hear about that? <laughs> This month, our Who's Give It be? All Away recipient is Price Hill Will. Woo! This is an amazing organization. If you don't know about it, they uh, benefit thousands of families that call Price Hill home. And as a part of that, they have a program specifically for children who do not have access to music programs in their schools. And they have started a program called My Cincy. And we get to partner with them on this program. My Cincy provides musical programs, musical instructions, instruments, and with our $20,000, they're going to start a brand new vocal music program. Oh. I am so excited about that. Amazing. It is amazing to see what God is doing with our collective generosity. So thank you. Yes, absolutely. And again, remember, we are an army of people. We are God's people linking arms to make these things happen. So if you can prepare to give today, you have a few ways to do it. You can text, you can give online, you can also drop off your check or cash at any of our info areas. And again, thank you for being so faithful, for being so obedient uh, in just giving because, you know, God is faithful and God will bless you abundantly just by doing so. All right. Will you join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, thank you so much for all the wonderful things happening here at Vineyard Cincinnati. We praise your name and we just intentionally, Father, come to you giving generously. Bless those offerings. Bless those people. All of us giving from what we have received from you. We praise you uh, for who you are and for everything you will continue to do in us and through us for your glory. Everybody say Amen. Amen. God bless you. Well, here we go again, monks and fools. <laughs> yes. Hey, this is so, so, so good. So good. Monks and fools. Fools and monks. It's your boy Clay. Monks and fools. Hey, hey. <laughs> Matt, have you been have you been working out? They're deltoids. You're, you're, you're dealt with. I have been taking care of myself, Clay. There's nothing like a good medicine ball, some stretchy bands, and a lot of Metamucil to make you feel great. <laughs> good morning. How y'all doing? I do take Metamucil every day, so just thought to let you know that. It's a good regimen. It was several years ago, I was asked to do a wedding for a couple, and the forecast was rainy. It was torrential rain was coming. And everyone and their mother was texting, oh, pray that we have a beautiful day. Pray, please ask God to make it a beautiful day. And the day came, and it was a beautiful day. And people walk up to me, and the couple, and the parents, said, oh, we prayed, you prayed, you got a beautiful day, you are so blessed. And they posted pictures of the beautiful wedding with the tagline, hashtag blessed. And I thought to myself, is that the way God works? I mean, we pray for no rain for our wealthy American weddings, and God makes it not rain. Is that, is that a big deal to God? I mean, don't get me wrong. I had a wedding last fall. I had, my daughter and my son-in-law had a wedding last fall. And we, we wanted nice weather, and we got nice weather. We thank God for nice weather. But is, is it really, are we really changing the weather? Is that how it works? What, what about... The farmer that's asking for rain, is he not hashtag blessed when we get a clear day? Is that what it means to pray like a monk and live like a fool, to ask for weather to change or pray for parking spots? Is that what it means? Last weekend, the Mingles lost. It broke all of our hearts. But I'm concluding that the Chiefs fans were praying more than we are. Right? The owners of, of the Chiefs are Christians, so they got more Christians on the team because that's how it works, right? 
But wait, we beat them the last three times. So maybe we had more Christians then. Is that how it works? If our team loses, we didn't pray hard enough? Is that, does, does, God, does God answer prayers based on our goodness, the number of people we have praying, the, the amount of our fervency? Is that what it means to pray like a monk, to have a, a fervent, d- deep prayer life like the monks of old so that we experience radical living where we could actually be called fools for Christ and we experience great fruit? If we're honest, it can be confusing. We wonder, how does it work? I mean, everyone was in this room, I know everyone in this room has asked for things in our life and we've seen no answer from God. Or we've gotten the opposite answer from God. Or we've experienced silence. How does it work? I, I believe in prayer, but I pray for more people that did not get physically healed than I pray for people that actually got healed. My, my batting average might be 100. That's not very good. I, I, does that mean I don't have much faith? Is that how it works? Eight years ago, you guys have heard me talk about my big brother, one of my best friends in the world, had pulmonary fibrosis. He had never smoked a day in his life. He had never worked in a coal mine. And that's how you typically get pulmonary fibrosis, the hardening of the lungs. And he died in March of that year. And two days after he died, I mean, literally, we had 10,000 people praying for him. He's a committed Christ follower, loved Jesus, loved his wife, loved his kids. Two days after he died, there's another guy who had stage four lung cancer. He'd smoked two packs a day, no judgment, just what it was. And he wasn't a committed follower. Maybe he had 10 of us praying for him. And he was radically and miraculously healed. Did God listen to the 10 more than the 10,000? Did he love that guy more than he loved Trey? Is that fair? How does prayer work? Anyone else feel me? Anyone else? Like Acts 12, in, in, in the story of the early Christians taking the church out, believing, seeing the resurrection of Jesus and taking the message of the resurrected Lord to the world, they were persecuted for their faith. Acts chapter 12, it says, King Herod pulled one of the disciples named James into prison and then beheaded him for following Jesus. And the next few verses, it says the apostle Peter, one of the 12 along with James, is thrown into prison as well to be killed and then God miraculously de- delivers him from prison. So maybe the disciples liked Peter more than James and they prayed harder for Peter than James. Is that how it worked? Right? Like, they prayed hard for Peter, he got out. They didn't pray hard for James. He, or I think, I think they both prayed for both. One died, one lived. How does that work? It can be confusing, right? Oh, and by the way, we forget Peter was crucified upside down just a few years later, so maybe the love ran out. Can I get an amen? Right? It can be confusing, right? Jesus says, ask for anything in my name, and it will be done for you. You have not because you ask. Ask for anything in my name. I've asked for a Tesla. I have a Honda. (laughs) I prayed in Jesus' name. Right? Is that, does God care about me getting a Tesla or a Honda? Did I pray wrong? The Apostle Paul, I mean the Michael Jordan of Christianity, or the LeBron James, whichever you choose. The, 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 the stud of all studs radically falls in love with Jesus, sees the resurrected king, leaves everything to follow him radically, writes a lot of the letters in the New Testament. It says, he writes, I prayed three times for this thorn of, in my flesh to be removed. I ask over and over again. I bet he prayed in Jesus' name, and it was not removed. And you know what Jesus said to him? My grace is sufficient for you. That's enough. How does this all work? It can feel frustrating. What's the way to grow in depth in our prayer life so that we live radical lives where we pray like the monks and live like the fools? That's why we're doing this series. There's a lot of us that don't pray because we've had misunderstandings about how prayer works or what prayer is about and we want to remove that and give us a healthy robust prayer life 12 minutes a day where we stop to be still then we move in two minutes of adoration then two minutes of confession two minutes of make it here on earth as it is in heaven your kingdom come your will be done and then move to the asking and diligently give us today our daily bread as we learn to pray scripture It can be so confusing, and many of us are asking, how do I get prayer to work? I get that question all the time. How do I get my prayer to work? I want to say to you today, if that's your question, it's a flawed question. The point of prayer is not to get God to work for us, but the point of prayer is to connect 
with Jesus, connect him in intimacy, and have him work in and through us to change the world. That is the primary point of prayer. We do ask, but the ask, ask flows out of connected relation with him. Where we're not trying to move him and get him to work, but instead we're asking him to work in us. C.S. Lewis said, I don't pray to change God's heart. I pray so that God will change my heart. That's the point of prayer. And when we have that attitude, then we won't be consumed with what's fair or not fair. I can tell you with clarity, I was bummed my brother Trey died, but I did not ask, is this fair? I did not ask, why God? Because I've cultivated a life of connection with my father. I've cultivated a life of trust in his goodness and his kindness. And if I ask for fair, we actually don't want fair from God. Can we be clear on that? If God gave us fair, we're all going to hell. Thank God he's not fair. He died on a cross to set us free. That wasn't fair. Right? The God of the universe gave his life for us, and he asks us to pray to be connected to him. He says in the scriptures, the sun shines on the righteous and the unrighteous. The rain falls on the good and bad. We live in a sinful world because of us. And Jesus came to make it right. Prayer is about us encountering him and making it here on earth as it is in heaven. When the disciples asked Jesus to teach them how to pray, these were men that prayed. They were Jews that prayed. So when they asked him that, it wasn't that they were saying, we've never prayed before. They were saying, we want to pray like you. There's something you. There's something in your prayer life that's different. It was relational. It was connected. They, they saw intimacy there that they didn't experience. So Jesus teaches them how to pray. And in the context of teaching them how to pray, one of them is in the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, 6, and 7. And Jesus starts out that whole sermon saying, you cannot save yourselves. You cannot save you. Only I can save you. And then chapter six, where he teaches on prayer, he moves into this chapter I call the motives chapter. What are your motives? When you're generous, when you fast, and when you pray, what are your motives? Notice he doesn't say if you fast and generous and pray. When? When you do these things, you gotta check your motives. If you want an effective prayer life, have right motives. Where's your heart? And he says this, and when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites, those that say one thing and do another. They love to pray standing in the synagogues and on street corners to be seen by others. Their whole motive is like, look how great I am. They're doing two things, living two different ways. And, and, and Jesus says, your reward, I truly tell you, they have received their reward in full. The reward they've gotten is that people see them. And then he goes on to say, and when you pray, do not keep on babbling like the pagans, for they think they'll be heard because of their many words. The pagans were these people that had idols, and they, they would just say a lot of words, blah, 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 try to manipulate and work God. They're trying to make God bend to their will. And he goes, they've missed out. Here's the deal. He goes on to say, look, don't pray to try to work me or manipulate me. I know what you need before you even ask. I'm not asking you to ask because I need to know what you need. I know what you need. I'm telling you to ask, to, to be connected with me. And I like it when you ask. Not because I'm, I just like to see that you need me. Not because he needs us to need him, but because it's a way of us admitting our need. And he says, go into an intimate place with me. Go into a private place to connect, to be still, to relationally commune with me, to, to, to talk and listen. <clears throat> We ask out of relationship. We ask as a result of relationship. It, it, think about that. My kids, when they were growing up, don't go, someone else, don't, go, don't go and ask someone else's dad for stuff. Or they don't go to someone else's dad and say, would you put me through college? No, they don't. They ask their mom and I because we're in relationship with them. That's how it is with God. Here's a question I have. Do we, do we pray with entitlement or expectancy? I think a lot of us play, pray with entitlement. Like you owe me something. And if we pray with entitlement, there's a, there's a transactional thing that's not relational and connected. But if we pray with expectancy, we pray with the desire to connect with him first. We pray with the desire to have relationship <clears throat> first. If I, if I pray with entitlement, I feel like I'm owed something. But if I, feel like, if I pray with expectancy, I'm owed nothing. I just want to connect with you. And then I ask out of that relationship. And when I don't get what I want, then I say, I I'm not questioning why. I'm asking, what are you up to? You love me. I know you love me. 
So then Jesus teaches us out of that motive how to pray. Our Father is in heaven, holy is your name. Vertical adoration, your God I'm not. And then he said, moves to uh, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Make it your will. I want your will to be done. I want your way to be done in and through me. And then we get the first ask. Give me today. Give us today our daily bread. I love this prayer. It's the first official ask. When we pray daily bread prayers, we're acknowledging a couple things. The ask is saying, I acknowledge you're the good provider. Everything I have. Like we in America feel like we earned what we've got. When we pray over meals, when we pray saying, God, daily bread prayers are saying, you're the one that provided for me. All I have is from you. And we put everything out there. The second thing we do is we say, you provide me for what I need today. You don't provide me for what I need yesterday. You don't provide me for what I need tomorrow. You give me what I need today. You don't give me what I want for yesterday. You don't give me what I want for tomorrow. You give me what I need for today. And you know what I need before I ask, and you're my good father who loves me. You give me what I need. And what do we need most? Jesus. When we pray daily bread prayers, we're saying Jesus is our bread. Jesus came in John 6 and said, I'm the bread of life. I'm where life is found. If we really pray daily bread prayers with the right heart, we're saying, Jesus, all I need is you. And when I have you, everything else falls in its place, in its right order. I love what Tyler Statton, this book we're looking at, said. He said, daily bread prayers are a daily reminder that we are not in charge. We're not in control. Prayer replaces control with trust. A God-given desire is only fulfilled by God-given means. We're saying you and you alone can do for me what I need. You and you alone are where life is found. This is the ultimate prayer. This is the ultimate purpose of prayer, to have relationship with him. So what's the most effective way to pray? What's the next tool in our toolbox for prayer? It's learning how to pray the scriptures. Because if Jesus is the word and Jesus is our bread, then we need to feed on the word and feed on Jesus and pray his word back to him. You wanna, you wanna increase your prayer life? Pray your, his word back to him. He loves that. He'll give you a yes almost every time. You pray his word back to him. Man, it changes your heart. We, we have to be people that are scripture fed and then spirit led. We gotta be scripture fed. and spirit. If you're not in the word, you can't have a powerful prayer life. Your prayer life needs to flow out of being connected in the word because that's the source of life. So as we build a prayer life, we also have to build a reading life to be scripture fed, spirit led. We all need to be in the word so that we can have more effective prayer. So I love to pray the word more than anything. I pray it over my wife, my daughters, Ephesians 1, Ephesians 3. We'll get more to that later. But I want a, a friend of mine to come to the stage. She's one of our, our team members, Swaith of Vincent. Would you come and give a warm venue welcome for Swaith of Vincent? <laughs> Swaith is, um, in, in Clay's language, her name is Sway Sway All Day. Um, that's her uh, nickname. But Swaith was on staff with uh, Salvation Army. Uh, she, to put it mildly, she is a studette. She's a complete, <laughs> amazing, really, I mean, she's a prayer warrior. You really are. And, and I just, Love what she, how she thinks about prayer on our team. And so tell us a little bit about your journey in prayer and through prayer and how you can help us think about praying the scripture. But first, your journey in prayer. Yeah, so my whole journey with God started with praying the word. I was 12 years old. I just moved from India to Chicago. I was a freshman in high school. I was so lost <laughs> walking through these hallways, not knowing what to do. And in the midst of all of it, found out that spring of 94 that my mom was diagnosed with kidney failure, and then she was dying. And so she was in the hospital unconscious, and life became a little too much for me. My first class of the day was biology. I always used to get there early, and one day, as I sat there waiting for class to start, I just started bawling. I couldn't hold it in anymore. And Mr. Whiting, my teacher, um, he had a special place for me in his heart. He just asked what was going on, so I just started sharing. He walked up to his desk, opened his bag, and he pulled out a Bible. It was a huge Bible. <laughs> he brings it, he 
just like drops it on the desk and he opens it up and he asks me two questions. Do you know who God is? And do you know what faith is? I thought I knew, but to be on the safe side, I just said no. And so he said, God is the one who is with you and he's for you and he's taking your sin and he has nailed it to the cross, explained it, and then he's like, I want you to hold on to the words, by his wounds you are healed. And that's coming out of 1 Peter chapter 2. And then he taught me what faith was, turned to Hebrews 11, and he points out that first faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And he told me, he said, now take those two and go pray for your mom. Hmm. So I did. The bus ride back home, those are the two things, by two things, by his wounds you are healed. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things I cannot see. I didn't understand what that meant, by the way. I didn't. I just thought if I hold on to the word that he gave me and I just went and prayed this over my mom, maybe something might happen. And that's exactly what I did later that evening, went there, and that was my prayer. Those two verses were exactly what I prayed for, and it was nothing short of a miracle. My mom, who was unconscious until that day, woke up. The, they released her within a couple of days. A week later, she went in for a follow-up, and they were comparing the ultrasound images of her kidneys, and the second set just showed that her kidneys were in brand new condition. Yeah. <clears throat> she's still alive today, and she's going to be with me in a month. Um, but that's where my journey started, and I thought, this is it. I found this, the, the magic pill, and I'm going to pray my way through everything. And so then I prayed. <laughs> I prayed that my life at home would get better, and it got worse. I prayed that my dad and sister would not be made to leave the country, and they did. There were seasons of my life, there was an entire year and a few more months where the only prayer on my lips was, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and my heart was broken, and that's all I could manage to pray. And that was scripture as well. Yeah, that's scripture as well. And then came a time when I was praying, praying, praying for my brother that he would not die. And I remember the morning I got a phone call saying that he died. And I remember the blood being drained, and I couldn't breathe, I couldn't speak, and when I finally got <clears throat> myself together, what came out was a scream, mm. and it kind of shocked me because the scream was just Jesus. And I sat there in this apartment. Not like the swear word. You weren't saying like a no. swear word. No. <laughs> you were saying like Jesus. The name you know, like, of like, Jesus. We like, don't want to do the other. We don't want to do the other. Jesus. Jesus. And it was just more and more and more hysterical, but that was the only thing that Mm. could come out. And I look back and I think what I was doing that day when anything else that I asked for did not come to be, the only thing I could do was mm. hold on to who he is and pray the word himself, mm. the eternal word, Jesus. So you've seen prayers answered and you've seen prayers not answered. Mm -hmm. But so then what is summarizing the big idea of the big idea of prayer? What's the big point? Over the years, I've learned <clears throat> that prayer is not something I do through the day, it's a place where I get to be with God. But it's a constant place of being. While I'm driving, while I'm at school, yeah. Yeah. it's a state of being. Yeah, and everything, petitions, praise, confession, repentance, tears, anger, whatever else, it's all part of that idea of prayer, but really for me, the purpose of prayer is to get to know the heart of God, is to know him for who he is and not just for what he does. Mm. And I see that in the life of Jesus when he's sitting before thousands of people running out of food and he lifts up that bread and the fish and he blesses it and feeds thousands. And yet when he's on a cross mm. and his prayers were not answered the way he prayed, and he was submitting to the Father's will, he said, he prayed scripture, by the way, which is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But the key word in there is my. God didn't give him what he asked for in the garden, and yet 
Jesus was holding on to who his father was and using that very personal, my God, my, knowing his father was always faithful. The no answer to prayer what. is connection with Jesus. Yeah. That's the big answer to prayer. Yeah. And then we ask out of that, and sometimes we get yeses, and sometimes we get no, sometimes yeah. we get wait. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And to especially pray the word, um, the best way that I can explain it is I have a five-year-old, Micah. Um, often when he's just really close to me, he's the one who likes to get in my face and has no personal boundaries. That's like and... I am with Kim. <laughs> okay. Okay. It's too much. <laughs> Too far. Too far. Uh, <laughs> All right, keep going. Sorry. Uh, anyway, <laughs> when he's Mark he, Lutz and I fluster sweat <laughs> quite often. It's on staff me. Yes, they do. Mm. Um, mm. When Micah gets that close to me, I have this overwhelming sense of wanting to express everything I feel in my heart, and somehow "I love you" doesn't capture it. Mm. So I look at him and I say, "Micah, my heart loves you." And then a few weeks ago, we're sitting on the couch, and he snuggles up really close, and all of a sudden, he grabs my face, and he locks eyes with me, and I think he sensed something deep, and he looks at me, and he goes, Mommy, my heart loves you. Mm. And it kind of clicked into place that what he was doing was expressing to me the best he could, cap capturing my words and my heart giving back just to express his love for me. And praying the word is the ultimate honor because if this life is about relationship between me and God, the best compliment I could give him, the best way I could express my love for him is to give his word back to him in the language that he phrases it. Like this, the word is God's love letter. An honest, open, raw love letter. And if I want to express it the way I think he should receive it and I want him to receive it, the best way for me to do it is praying his word back to him. So and he, doesn't, he doesn't need our love. We need his no, love, right? right? Like he doesn't need us to pray the word back. We need it. Mm -hmm. When we pray his word back, we change. Mm -hmm. And it's a connection. And as Tyler said earlier, he doesn't need us to ask, but it's a connection to ask. And if I'm asking out of relationship and trust, then again, when I don't get what I want, I'm sad, but I'm okay, because I know my dad loves me. I know he's good, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So we need to pray the word, and, 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 and you know, I love to pray like Ephesians 1. There's prayers in Ephesians 1. There's prayers in Ephesians 3. The Ephesians 1 prayer is give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation that we would know you better. We'd help us open the eyes of our heart to know the height, width, depth, and length of your you know, your, your power, your riches, your glory. And then Ephesians 3, let us know the height, width, depth, and length of your love. I just pray, you can pray Psalm 23. You can, you can pray the fruit of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. You can pray almost anything in Scripture. Maybe the king of Moab was a very fat man. It's hard to pray. But you can pray almost anything else. That was a joke, sorry. So you like to pray the Scripture. That, that's a part of your daily routine, to pray the Word. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's yeah. great. All right, here's our next steps. Next steps, we're going, to we're going to practice here as a family, but we're going to continue our two minutes of prayer. We're going to add to the two minutes. So the, we, we had two minutes of silence. Then we had two minutes of adoration, two minutes of uh, confession, two minutes of your kingdom come, your will be done, and now we're going to add two minutes of scripture to the deal. And, and we need you, we're inviting you, not need, not need you, but inviting you, please, start reading the scriptures with us because if you feed yourself with the scriptures then you'll have more things to pray right so be scripture fed spirit led we've got three different types of bible plans on the scriptures a qr code if you want to click on that there's three different scripture plans there's a three minute 45 second a day scripture plan there's a 10 minute scripture plan and then there's a 30 minute but if we had 12 minutes of prayer and 15 minutes of reading man it, that's that's a power packed way to live our life and to be connected with the Lord. So, all right, so Ethan, you're gonna guide us through the steps. And then yeah. you're gonna kind of, a, we'll normally be 12, you normal, on your own it'd be 12 minutes, two minutes each. She's gonna guide us through like 30 seconds of each. Silence, adoration, confession, make it here. And then we're gonna do two minutes where she's gonna guide us through how she prays scripture from Philippians 2. So if you wanna get comfortable, get in a posture,
of stillness. Kind of put your hands on your knees, maybe open posture. And this one, none of us are going to guide. We're just going to sit for 30 seconds in stillness, breathe, and then she's going to guide us through adoration. So now we move to adoration. And just silently to yourself, you can say to yourself, you can speak out loud, Father, I adore you. I adore you. My Father who is in heaven, holy is your name. Adoration is a weird word. We acknowledge your God. We are not God. You are God. We are not God. You love us. We adore you for your love. We, ad- we thank you for your goodness. Mm-hmm. We thank you for your majesty. We adore you for sending your son to die on a cross and rise again for us. We thank you that you're alive. You're holy. You're powerful. Holy, holy, holy is the lamb of God. You're the lion and the Judah and the the lamb. Thank you, Jesus. We need you, Jesus. And then we confess. And I move to a place of confession. You say, oh, God, I can't do it on my own. I need you. I confess my striving. I confess my trying to do it on my own. I confess self-sufficiency. I confess pride. I confess envy. I confess lusts. I confess not thinking you're enough, not trusting you to be my bread, to be my sustenance. Just confess. And then pray, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I pray things like, Lord, your kingdom come, your will be done in my wife's life. Make it on earth as it is in heaven and my daughter's and my son-in-law's life. Would you make it here on earth as it is in heaven in this church's life? Would you make it here on earth as it is in, in heaven in my friends' lives? Would you make it here on earth as it is in heaven in the lives of the young men and women that don't know you that I'm in relation with, that that they would see your love, see your grace. Make it here on earth as it is in heaven and everywhere we go. Make it here on earth as it is in heaven in my friend's cancer, in the midst of my friend's loss of their parents. More, Lord. For this next portion, I'm going to invite us to stand if you can. We're going to pray through Philippians 2, verses 5 through 11. And we just changed the words to become a little bit more personal. Instead of the third person, now we are speaking to Jesus, taking the words inspired by the Spirit of God and praying this back. And in speaking and praying these words today, what we are doing is declaring not only to each other, I think of praying the word as declaring to my own heart and soul and to the unseen world around us, to principalities and powers. As Paul mentions it in the Bible, we are just declaring the truth about who he is to the physical world and the unseen world. We're gonna read through it We're not reading in unison. I'm going to encourage you to start reading at your own pace. The music will just kind of drown out some of that awkwardness. Um, And maybe there's a phrase or a word in there that jumps out at you, and you're like, this is the word I need to hold on to. I want you to 
keep repeating that. And maybe that's where you're going to dwell, or maybe you will make it to the end of this prayer. But this is where we just open up and you lift up your love language to Jesus himself. Jesus, you being in very nature God, did not consider it equality with God, something to be used to your own advantage. Rather, you made you made yourself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant. Being made human in human likeness. Being made in human likeness. Being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, you humbled yourself by becoming obedient. Obedient to death. And you being found in appearance as a man, you humbled yourself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted you to the highest place and gave you the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father and the church resounded with an amen. Yeah, amen. Jesus, we thank you that you are the risen one and that at your name, just say the name of Jesus out loud, Jesus. 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 At the name of Jesus, every knee will bow Every sickness will bow in heaven, on an earth, and every tongue will confess that you are Lord. We worship you as Jesus. Fill us our hearts so full of your power and your presence. And now we sing back to you, Lord, a scripture you wrote to us in number six, the blessing, your promise to bless us as your children. We sing that prayer back to you. This is another way to pray scripture back to God. So we lift our hands, we lift our voices to worship you for blessing us so richly. Let's worship.
upon you in a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you in a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you in a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you in a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind and beside you, all around you, and within you, He is with you, He is with you, in the morning, in the evening, in your coming, in your going, in your weeping, and rejoicing, He is for you, He is for you, He is for you, He is for you, He is for you. let it be. As we pray that scripture, we're trusting God in his word. They say, if you trust me, I'll bless you for generations. I want to invite prayer teams down. And if you want prayer for anything, if you want the word prayed over you, come say, would you pray some scripture over me? If you want uh, healing of, of something, come get prayer. We have a ministry slide with words on it that it's that's something that you have physically, emotionally, or spiritually you want prayer for. Come get prayer. We bless you to go in the name and the power of Jesus. We'll see you guys next week.